Hello, welcome to GTA XL Tech. Today we're going to be learning about IP addresses. We're going to be learning about, you know, basically IP address blocks, what an IP address looks like, how many there is, um, how they appear in binary. So, basically, an IP address usually looks like this. Not the LAN IP, by the way. It's 192.168.1.1. This is the four octets right there. Octets. How do you spell them? <laughs> so, we're going to be learning about IPv4 addresses, which stands for Internet Protocol. Basically, IPv4 and TCP slash IP. Basically, now everything that gets transferred over there it has to get transferred via protocol. This is usually um, transferred via TCP, Transmission Control Protocol. Now, how this works is basically. You have the remote server, okay? You have that server's connection to a gateway, basically linked to other routers, etc., etc., backbone routers. And then here's your ISP's router, the one that is local to you. And they'll all link together. And they, all, these, all these servers go to exchange points, and there's several exchange points, okay? Usually all the ISPs want to go to an exchange point. They'll connect to you, the home user. So everything you do is not just going straight to one server. It's going through many to get there. Which is also, you can figure out how, by a trace route. Usually you'll see a bunch of your ISP routers and then you'll see other routers. And you'll see the ISP router, the server, etc and we'll get to the server eventually. So, um, oops, I mess up. Let's first talk about a few things. You got DNS, which stands for Domain Name Service or Server. And basically, DNS does the famous thing. Domains to IPs, and also host names, such as RDNSs, PTRs, that kind of thing. Um, so, YouTube.com, when you type that in, that right there is a domain. Okay, now a lot of people say, always include www. Well, that is a subdomain. And some people don't even add that to their DNS, to their DNS records. That, that's just a subdomain, okay? This right here is the domain, and this right here is the TLD, top level domain. So, yeah, basically, computer does not care about that domain. That domain doesn't tell it crap. A DNS server, your, your computer, your router, etc. It will connect to a sp specific IP address, usually via DHCP, and they'll do a DNS lookup from the root DNS servers and other DNS servers. Basically, root DNS servers, I believe, are owned by Verisign. Not sure on that. Might have to do some research on that. But DNS. It goes to an IP address, which is the um, DNS server. It will pull that via um, TCP and UDP port 53. It'll pull that, and it'll get the it'll get the IP address of YouTube.com. It might it might return several IP addresses, which it, it will. And then the computer will just randomly pick one of those. And it'll connect to that. So that's how that works. DNS. If you want me to go in extreme more detail, um, there will be more videos coming soon on that. And all you gotta do is tell me if you need, if you want to know more about DNS, just tell me in the comments. So now we got a bunch of red marker on my thing. Let's get some blue marker. Right now. So um, you know, there's DNS, and also when you get a file from a server. Of course, you know there's other servers. 
like here's your computer. You have a client, and you have a server. You have a user, and you have a host. Okay? And you have backbone routers, um, all this stuff in between you to connect through. And yes, each time it may go to a different route. Totally. Okay? Like CenturyLink router or whatnot. That's my router wrong. And then the host. Um, well, basically, when you're downloading a file or transferring a file to the internet, basically all the internet is is transferring files. <laughs> or streaming files, I should, I should say. Streaming media. Um, basically, TCP, you're going to send a request for that file. And then this will send one packet. One, one packet. Okay? And then this will reply, hey, I received that. I got that one packet. And uh, your client will, will tell the server that. The server will then send two packets. And it will keep increasing. And this happens very, very fastly. Now, there's an error. Like, maybe a packet was missed. It will drop back down. You get me? But this is called TCP windowing. It's basically the, the, for the server and the client to detect the quality of the line and how many packets, how many bytes of data to send per second, basically. Okay. Going over some basic stuff. Every, not every computer, actually, yes, every computer, um, the internet has an IP address. Now your computer might not have a specific public IP address. You know why? Because you have a LAN IP address that then goes to your router and then your router uses NAT. But um, let's go into this. So let's go into some IP addresses. IP addresses, um, an IP address. Identifier. It's an identifier and also it allows um, computers to connect to you and trans transfer. Okay? You can host a file. Okay? And then what port forwarding is. Sorry if I spell stuff wrong, I'm in a rush as usual. Port forwarding, all it's doing is basically allowing a port in a firewall, which is the router's firewall. That's all port forwarding is. Okay? So now Basically, IP address, an IP address identifies you on the network. You can find, um, please go to our blog, HTTP, which means use HTTP protocol. All web browser, you don't even need to type in HTTP on a web browser usually because it knows HTTP is the protocol to use. And then, tech, subdomain, by the way, dot gtaxl dot net. TLD domain. Please visit tech.gtaxl.net. That's our blog. We also will have a post there. But if you're a visual learner like me, I will try to explain some of this stuff to you. So, an IP address. Okay, you got several IP addresses. You want to know how many IP addresses there is in the, world, in the, world, in the entire world? Well, that's not hard to f figure out with. Um, a cedar, um, a cedar zero. So let's explain some stuff, okay? An IP address. You got private blocks, private IP addresses, which can be used on home networks and businesses, okay? Basically, communicate to this computer right here, to that one down the hall, basically. And these IP addresses are not public via the internet, they're basically local. And then when you connect to the internet, that LAN IP, you connect to the router, and then that uses that transfer, transfer to then connect publicly. So, let me get my handy calculator because, yes, using stuff like um, networking and stuff, you need to know some math. So, me, I don't really know math that well. <laughs> you know, lol. But, um, that's why you have this nice handy dandy T34 Monte View Texas Instruments calculator. It has my name on it. <laughs> but um, how many IP addresses is, is there in the world? Well, let's first look at the IP range. Okay, IPPI, IPv4, Internet Protocol version.
true floor. It's basically the main one using right now. I know IPv6 is coming out. Everybody's talking about, but hey, at the rate we're going, we're not going to be, we're not going to be using that. You know, typically until around like 20, 2025 or something, 2020 even. But um, so here's the range: 0.0.0.0.2255 0 .0 0 0 0 0.255.255.255.255. That is the range. No, there's not a fifth dot. So IP address has four octets. And then it ranges from 0000 to 255, 255, 255, 255. You're probably wondering why two, why is 255 the limit? That is because of one reason. Binary. That's why you only go up to 255. You're wondering, binary, explain it to me. Well, binary consists of um, eight bytes okay eight bytes so let's do um one and zero you probably know that's that's binary one and zero is binary Can, are you getting that good so these right here one of these is a bit now eight bits equals <coughs> one byte okay sorry about that eight bits equals one byte Okay, am I getting a little confused? I probably am. But um, okay, let's explain this a little bit of binary before I get confused and mess up the video. Cause I know how it works and all that. Except some stuff I might twist it around a little bit or forget because I'm not very, I'm not a really good note taker or anything. I don't really like to prepare for before videos. So. You know, if I'm getting a little nervous, you know why. Anyway, I'm trying to explain this to the best of my ability. So binary, you have 128, and then what would come after that? 64, and then um, 64 would be, I believe, 32. 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, one. Do you guys see a pattern? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. I see a pattern. Looks like it's doubling. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 plus 16 is 32. 32 plus 32 is 64. 64 plus 64 is 128. So this is, this should show the 8, the 8 bytes or bits. 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six. Actually, the eight bits that make up a, a one byte of binary. So, I'm conducting the IP address. This, this, this is how it's going to be laid out. The computer only knows two things on or off. One equals on, zero equals off. That's pretty obvious, right? Yeah. So, let's try it. Let's do an IP address, okay? One, one, zero, 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 zero. Okay? So let's figure this out. This is a binary byte right here. One, one, zero, 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 zero. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, no. I did that wrong. <laughs> My dashes are wrong. Sorry. Um, let's, let's, let's fix this. Let's clean this up, okay? Okay. Not so big. 8. There it is. Okay. Now for an IP address, the binary goes this way. Okay. Sometimes it can go the other way. It can go 1, 2, 4. But this is how the IP address goes. It goes this way. Okay. This is to identify an IP address. Okay. Let's see if that's still running. Yes, it is. Good job. Okay. So, 
Let's not make this too confusing. Okay. So let me let me make It should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Eight bits. One byte. There we go. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think again. I'm not losing my mind. So now, we all know that there are four bytes in an IP address. Okay? So now, I've been. This is what how I've been studying. Okay, so we all know one is an on, zero is an off. Okay, so all these are off. So basically, you're like, what's this tell me? Well, we got an on on 128. And we got an on 64. What's 128 plus 64? Let's let's take out our calculator because if you're like me, <laughs> plus 64, and it gives you 192. <gasps> you probably heard that number before, haven't you? OMG. So, so far, our IP address is 192. That's the first decimal that we get from that. Okay? So, and our code is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Wait, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Whoa, am I, I'm, I'm not getting lost again. Now that's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the this is the decimal that we got. This is the binary we got so far. Let's keep let's keep working on it, okay? Without ruining it. <laughs> okay. So Let's get the rest of the IP address, okay? Okay, I'm, by the way, I'm just making, uh, I'm really just making these ones and zeros up. So then the next byte of binary shows us this. We're trying to identify an IP address now, okay? So we got on, off, on, off, 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 on, off. So, it tells us we have an on at 128, an on at 32, and an on at 2. So, 128 plus 32 plus 2. This should give us our next decimal. So, if you're like me, 128 plus. It gives me 162. So 192.162. Beautiful, huh? This is our IP address so far. And then we got one. Off, 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 on, off. So that's the binary code that we got so far. We gotta do this two more times to get it. But you guys basically getting it? Make making sense, huh? I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Now that you're getting how this is working, how the how the how it shows up in binary, but um, it's really really extremely self-explanatory. It's all it really just all comes down to math. So now let's get the next decimal or decimal from binary code. I'm gonna make up something random, okay? So one 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 one. What will this give us? What will that give us? Guys, think. What if the binary is all on? What is the maximum for the range that we, we said earlier? Remember this? 255.255.255.255. Do you guys remember that? I do. I wonder. I wonder what all these equal. 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. Let, let me add all that up, okay, guys? Or I guess what's we'll out. <sighs> guess what I got, guys? And I don't know if you can really see it really well. 
that says 255. So, complete ones on a bite is 255. 255. So that's our IP so far. 192, 162, 255. Let's do our last one, okay, guys? Okay. Wonder what this one is. This is easy. None of these are on, so it's zero. Hence, hence how we get how we have a range of zero 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 to two two five five two five five two five five two five five. That explains it right there. It's all about the binary, guys. That's how we. That's the reason why you can only go the max of two five five right there. Making sense, huh? Yes, it is. This is making a lot of sense. So, there's the IP address. If you want to convert it, this IP address, the binary. There's the IP address in binary. Just, it's on, on, off, 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 on, off, on, off, 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 on, off. On, 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 off, 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 off. That is the IP address in binary. Right there, guys. It makes so much sense. 192.162.2550. Make it sense? Yes, it is. So, let's go, let's, let's, let's explain some more of this, okay? Before I have a heart attack. Because... I'm not wanting to talk on a Monday night. <laughs> Just I really wanted to get this get this in because you know I'm cool like that. Okay, so IP addresses. We all know that the default range is 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0, not default, the official range. 255.255.255. Dot two five five. I can't fit it. Zero 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 two five five two five five two five five two five. There is the range of IP addresses. How many total IP addresses are there in the entire world? Let's let's figure this out. We're all equals four two nine four nine six seven two nine six. That's thousand. That's million. That's billion. Four billion. There are 4 billion, actually 4.2 billion possible IPv4 addresses. This does not include public though. This also includes private because there are private ranges in that, trust me. So, there's your answer on that. And that's how they solved it. It's not that hard. Just think of the range. Now, let's go in this thing deeper. Okay? Well, you're probably asking, what are the private ranges? Well, IN, INA, IN, INA, which stands for Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, basically came up with RF, RFC 1918. Yes, I had to research the name of this. Okay? Now, this block, now, here's a private block. 10.0.0.0 to 10.255.255.255. There is a range. That is a private range. Which means this can only be used on home business subnets. That means if you try to load one of these IP addresses from somewhere else in the world, and that the IP address does not exist on your local network, you're not going to be able to connect to it. These IP addresses are for using for local networks. And yes, all your computers will get a local IP from DHCP, which we'll explain DHCP later on. But yes, that's a, that's a private range. Okay, you've probably seen 10.0.0.1. Well, that is in that private range. That's the private range. And you know it's 255.255.255? Beautiful, right? I know, I love it. So, guess how many IP addresses are, are um, basically can fit in that range? 
16.7 million. Is that enough for your business? Are you really going to have 16.7 million computers on your network? Say you have more than that, okay? There's other private, private IP ranges. You don't believe me? That's just um, that's supposed to be 16.7 million, okay? Well, there are. There's 172.1600. And I usually put a dash through my zeros, but you know, I'm being too lazy. To 172.31.255.255. That's not that's not a private range you can use, which can consist up to one million. There's an additional million, guys. So 17.7 million private private IP ranges that private IPs that you use on your business so far. You're probably like, that's still. Not enough for me. Oh, that's not enough. Well, I feel really sorry for you. Okay? Because, guess what? There's one more range. Well, one more that's well known. Okay? There might be other private ranges. You can check on Ionana. They have a website. Okay? There's also 192. You probably you probably all are like, oh yeah, I know this one. 168. 0 0.0. 2. 192.168.255. That two five five. How many possible IPs are on that? I want to do two, don't you? Um, I don't actually have it written down, but um, you can calculate two five five two five. You know, you can calculate. So that's that. Okay. There's your three main private ranges. These are for local networks. If you really want me to go in depth with that, why is a local network and all that? I can. <laughs> okay. Now, basically no IP addresses, right? There's also IPv6, okay? And their private their private range is RFC 4193. If you want to look at the private IPv6 addresses. Now, we explain binary, okay? And we want to figure out what an IP address is, right? From binary, right? That's not that hard to do, okay? So basically, an IP address contains of um, four bytes, right? Four bytes, and there is eight bits per byte. So four bytes, and um, I don't know what was going on about. Oh, yeah. How many bits? How many bits are in an IP address? Let's let's copy that. Thirty-two bits. Right, Thirty-two bits in the IP address. Okay. Which have you ever seen an IP address? Have you ever seen an IP address like this one? That one dot one slash thirty two. That basically means one IP address, which means that one right there. Okay, this right here is called a CIDR. C I D R. I really haven't studied CIDRs in depth. So, I really don't extremely know what they are. But, I know it has to do with IP allocation. It's similar to a subnet mask. It's, it's kind of similar to subnetting. So, a CIDR stands for Classless Interdomain Routing. Okay? So, if you see a 32, it basically means 32 bits, one IP address. Okay? Um, if you see a CIDR 0 at the end, That means all the IP addresses in the world. Anyway, which is 4.7 billion or whatever it was. <laughs> 4.2 billion. Okay, so I basically went over the main stuff, except we haven't really went into depth with subnet masking. Subnet masking, I don't know total crap about, but you've probably seen something like this.
basically all it means is um, say your IP address is this. Okay? Basically it means in the DHCP range, the only addresses that are changing is at the end, which the, the zero is the identifier of it. Okay? And then binary, that'd be eight ons, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that would be ox. Obviously, right? Simple. So let's think. Let's think about this. A subnet mask, all it does is basically identify it. Identify to the router in the network. What IP addresses are in my range or in my network? Local. Basically, that zero tells it. Well, these all the stay, stay the same. These, these these numbers right here they stay the same apart throughout the whole subnet, throughout the whole network. And that zero says these numbers back here change. So another IP address that could be in that in that subnet would be 57. Okay. Now this makes it really 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 smart because one router you can set this to zero. Next router you can set to one. One nine two dot one six eight dot one dot twenty eight. Then it can help you identify, hey, that IP address has nine two one six eight one. That's on that router over there. Let's see, there's some examples. So basically an introduction. You saw how um, IP addresses are put in binary, you know. How many bits are in an IP address? 32. And um, how many how many bytes? Um, you know, how many bits equals a, one byte? Eight bits equals one byte. Um, but yeah, it's really self-explanatory, huh guys? And IP addresses, it's not that hard. It's an identifier. Now, ISPs, they will buy. They will buy an IP block from INA or the well, they'll they'll buy an assignment, I should say, but they'll set in their DHCP servers. And like like my mine is six seventy six dot one twenty eight or something. So they'll buy an IP block like that. And their range would probably be like to. 76, 128, 255, 255, you know, you get the point, right? But ISP is like, the, ISP is by um, IP blocks. All an IP block is, is a range of IPs, which are very similar. Or, it doesn't have to be start at 00 to 255, 255. It can be very, very customized, but it'll be, it'll be a range of IPs, which have the same startings. And yes, I, ISPs do buy different different um, startings as well, different IP ranges. So, yeah, basically a bunch of routers and a bunch of, um, you know, DHCP servers, etc. to make this internet work. And, yeah, I don't know really what else to explain. Um, the SPC, when IP address explain binary, um, CIDR is basically, um, has to do with IP allocation, that kind of stuff. I haven't really studied CIDR yet. Subnet identifies, just, it just identifies what part of that block changes and what is static. And that's a good thing to talk about. Static. Static equals not changing. stable. Static, you would use on servers, right? Am I correct? Yes, I am correct. Static, not changing. What is static? Let's see, 192. Well, we said what was static. 192, 168, 0. Because our subnet mask was 255.255.255.0. Right? That's static. That is what stays static. 
this part of the dress stays static. This part of the dress is randomized, depending on what computer it is. Makes sense? Yes, it does. Dynamic. Equals changing. Okay? So, what would be changing? The 28. Which, well, IP addresses are static. There's some static. That, all that tells you is um, you're, set, you're set on a static IP. That basically means your entire IP is not going to change on the web. It's going to stay the same. You're going to stay binded to it. Good for servers. Actually, it's good for anything. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know why Dynamic exists. Well, Dynamic exists for uh, usually businesses because some computers, like some people, you know, you got a bunch of empty space and you don't want that allocation in a DHCP server. So there will be something called a DHCP lease, which will, um, usually it's 24 days, 7 days, something like that. It will cycle through, reassign all the computers new new LAN IP addresses, and then forget about the ones that are not even connected. That's what it will do. It, help, it kind of keeps it clean. But that being said, you know, most um, most DHCP servers, uh, which I should say most routers, um, they're configured that they give you give you um, an IP address allocation that is static for your computer. They're not going to change on you. Uh, most are anyway. But yeah, static. What is the static in this IP? Explain what's a static IP? An IP address on the internet. That doesn't change, okay? Or an LAN IP that doesn't change. You can have static. You can have static allocations, which is I strongly recommend if you're having, if you're running a bunch of servers and stuff. Definitely put have a static running on those. But um, I hope I explained this to you in most definitions. Um, I don't know what else to cover over. Um, we did see this one block. Um, that was. 17216 0 to 0 and 17231. Well, you see that the, that this octet, the second octet, changed. Well, varied. You have some you have some range in there. So the subnet mask would be 255240. Why is the subnet mask different? Well, because that identifies, hey, certain stuff changes there. That wouldn't be a zero though. Because it's you know, it's just not freely. 255, 240. So, yep. Now, if you want to explain DHCP, I can go into that as well. So let's let's, let's talk about DHCP here a little bit. We can talk about a little bit of DHCP, right? I love DHCP. So let's 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 explain DHCP. DHCP, Dynamic Host Control Protocol. Usually, it's for dynamic. IPs. Usually a bunch of ISPs use it. DSL, even cable uses it. So DSCP, well, let's, let's explain that. Usually DSL uses it. Your router even uses DHCP to assign those LAN IPs to you. Let's explain this. You have your router right here. Okay? There's your router. And I like 2R because 2R, hey literally, my 2R was KPass. So that's my router, okay? Here's your computer. Here's computer 1. Here's computer 2. And here's your iPod, okay? So that, the two wire will basically connect, even the two wire will connect via DHCP. It will do that because it will connect to a server called DSLAM, DSL, automatic machine, which is basically a DHCP server that connects to, that has a connection to the internet via fiber, which links to a bunch of server router, which links to a bunch of routers and, you know, exchange points links you to the internet, okay? And of course you have a few ISP servers in there as well, so they can sniff you. But, um, this right here, the DSLAM is a DHCP server. And it has an IP address allocation that was assigned to it. So let's take a look at this. Your, you connect to your 2-wire, or your router, and it has DHCP server on it too. For LAN. So it's going to give you an IP address. 10.0.0.54 this one will have 
25. Is it still running? Okay, good. I don't like doing all this work for now. The iPod, it'll have 10.0.0.47. Okay? So, what does DHCP send? It sends yeah, the IP address of the device. It will actually assign one, depending on the DHCP um, range that you have set in the subnet mask. And I've actually had, I've actually assigned a non-private DHCP range before. Don't do that, because basically there might be a computer out there that has an IP, and instead you're going to be connecting to your, one of your home computers. Okay? Use a private range. So, basically all the devices on your network have a private IP. Okay? Say you want to connect to that computer. Say that computer has a website. Say that, say you have it port forwarded and the website's yahoo.com. Well, you're not going to want to go to yahoo.com because that, then you'll go over the net, over the internet, waste all that trace route, waste all that latency, come back through just to connect to that. And mostly, mostly, routers will not let you connect to your own IP due to a stupid reason like that. You do not want to do it over, over the internet. Your IP is 10.0.0.54. That's what's going. That's what you're going. That this machine's going to see. You're going to connect to his LAN IP, 10.0.0.25. You're going to you're going to type that in. Type it. Put it in. Actually, you're going to run a local DNS server. Run a local DNS server, and and then set Yahoo to resolve to that LAN IP. And this DNS server will only apply to your LAN computers. Set that DNS server IP in the router's DNS. Set it in there, and then basically you can manage that without having to go over the internet or have, without all the fuss. It makes it so much easier for you. So that's how that DHCP, DHCP, DHCP gives you an IP address, gives you DNS settings, like the DNS servers to use, and if you set a DNS server in there, basically all the router is going to do is act as a forwarder. And yes, routers do run named, but um, it's going to act as a forwarder to whatever IP address you put in there, or it's just going to it's gonna get the get the IP address from the VSLAM DHCP server and use that. But you know, that's how it works. I'll get DNS settings. So if I set one, if I set 10.0.0.47 as the DNS, and I have a I have name running on there, there we go. All the DNS queries are gonna go to that. I can set custom queries as well. So Yahoo.com will equal this for me instead of the public IP address. Okay? IP address and DNS. Um. DHCP lease, it gives it that. Um, default gateway, which is your router. It gives the typical mumbo jumbo, right? It also gives a, it also tells it the subnet, subnet mask. But yeah, that's basically the stuff that DHCP does. DHCP is basically the f best thing. Because if you don't have DHCP, you have to enter all this stuff manually to each computer. This DHCP, I love DHCP, and I'm actually becoming a DHCP geek. I'm actually trying to just learn more about DHCP. But um, DHCP is good for business. It's good for me. It's good for you. It's good for the consumer, etc. So, basically, I'm starting to get sore throat from talking. Please click like on this video for me doing all this work. But yeah, when it comes down to it, a bunch of connectivity, a bunch of IP ranges. But, yeah, may I say it not? You basically get what DHCP is. I mean, DHCP runs on like every router. Basically does all that stuff for you automatically. It gives you that stuff. You can figure half of that stuff in there. like. The IP address, it will dynamically, it will ch it'll randomly pick one. Usually most routers will go in order, especially to our thick ass like that. It should go in order. Um, whatever DNS you have specified, if you don't have that DNS specified in the router, it will, it will, it will pull it from the DSLAM, the DHC per C server that you're connected to. Um, and then the lease, that's configured in there. There's usually a default like seven days. Make it higher unless your router does um, actually do static and doesn't change your LAN IPs. Which if it does, that's kind of a bummer. Because the only time that it should change is on a DSLAM because that makes sense, right? I mean, ISPs. Oh, and also, how, I, did I forget to mention MAC addresses? MAC addresses.
MAC address basically identifies your computer on the network, okay? Basically, this is in the NIC or whatnot, or in the hardware address of the NIC. But a MAC address is basically an address. It's a, it's a random one. I don't really know the syntax fully of it, but it's really random. And um, basically, that will that will tell you that hey, this is a computer. And that the the DHCP server will remember that that. So next time it sees that when it's connecting, it will assign that same IP address, etc. You get me? So say you want a new IP, new um IP from your ISP. Say you want to change your IP, your public IP. Basically, your router has a MAC address. You change the MAC address on your router, then reconnect to the DHCP server. It will give you a new IP address. But um, MAC address. I forgot to talk about that. But MAC address basically um, is an address that's usually on the network interface card, etc. Any connections. Um, basically, it, 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 it identifies the device and then. Basically, the router will know, hey, that IP goes to that MAC address, etc. You've also heard of MAC address filtering. That makes it where certain MAC addresses um, are only allowed to connect to the network. Good thing to do on Wi-Fi, but hey, hints. People can change their MAC address on the computer. Do not publicly share your MAC address. Try to keep it random and simple. Well, don't really worry about your MAC address. You're basically your network, um, your network interface card and all that, etc. But, yes. Um, thank you. Please visit our, our um, blog at tech.gtaxl.net. Thank you guys for um, watching this video. I hope you like. And please remember to subscribe. And um, there will be more videos where this comes from. So thanks for watching my networking video. Um, this was mainly pointed towards IP address and IP addresses and binary, which is also is on the blog. Well, I'm actually still typing it on the blog, but it will be on the blog. So thank you very much. Please subscribe. Um, I will be making more networking videos to go deeper into DNS, because I like DNS, go deeper into DHCP, that kind of stuff. Thank you guys for watching.